Victims of fatal I-43 crash identified. Community gives thanks for Jamie's safe return. Power outage delays flights at Madison Airport. These stories and much more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister and welcome to Community News Review for Monday, January 21st, 2019. The story of the two people killed in a crash on southbound I-43 in the village of Kohler Friday, the names of those two have been released. Authorities say 58-year-old Heidi Martini of Forestville and 20-year-old Shawnee Silas Grode of Green Bay lost their lives in the accident. There are two other passengers in the vehicle that were injured. Those names have not been released, but Kohler police say that neither lived in Sheboygan County. The accident occurred just south of of County Highway PP around 11 o'clock p.m. on Friday. Responding officers found the vehicle had left the road and hit a tree. I-43 was snow covered and slippery at the time of the crash and the investigation is still continuing. Roads got icy Tuesday evening as temperatures and freezing drizzle fell across Sheboygan County. Sergeant Jesse Smith with the Sheriff's Department says overall the county saw eight property damages accidents, but no one was injured. Smith said that the worst of it was in the western part of the county. And Smith also says that on Highway 23 west of Plymouth, semis had to move to the side of the road to get traction because the highway was just a sheet of ice. Highway crews were out throughout the night treating the roads. And meanwhile, in Atagami County, icy conditions are being blamed for the crash that killed a 17-year-old girl from Sheokton. Officials say she lost control, went into the ditch, and hit a tree. At a press conference Thursday morning at the State Capitol Assembly, Republicans announced a middle-class tax cut that helps fulfill one of Governor, Governor Tony Evers' campaign promises. Representative Terry Katzman tells WHBL News that this would take roughly $340 million out of the state's current surplus and give it directly back to the taxpayers. Katzman says what they are proposing is a 10% tax cut to the middle class families in the state of Wisconsin. Representative Tyler Vorpagal says 75% of the tax cut goes to people making between $30,000 and $100,000 per year. Katzman says that this separate from the Governor Evers' proposed budget and has widespread support among the Assembly Republicans. And they're hoping that since Governor Evers has already addressed it, that there would be widespread Democratic support as well. They call it a good, simple plan that gets money back into the hands of taxpayers without increasing taxes on businesses or agriculture industry, but instead by using the surplus. An Eclair dance studio owner is accused of child sexual assault and abduction. 39-year-old Todd Paulus is charged with inappropriately touching a child under 16 and forcing her to touch him. Police say they are also filing a child abduction charge because of the victim met Paulus away from her home without her parents' knowledge and stayed there overnight. Paulus is the owner of T4 Dance Company, an online message says, all private lessons and groups will be canceled with me until further notice. So sorry, everyone. Police say it is possible that there are other victims and they are asking T4 students or their parents to contact investigators if they believe that there was inappropriate conduct. Paulus is now free on a $10,000 signature bond and he is due back in court February 27th. 
The White Cap Mountain Ski Resort near Hurley is planning to rebuild its main lodge after a fire on Friday. The building suffered extensive damage and the fire started in the chimney around 5 o'clock p.m. Flames could be seen coming through this, the roof and the main building and smoke was visible for miles. Multiple fire departments from Iron County responded to the alarm and the Red Cross responded to assist first responders at the scene. There were no injuries. The ski area and ski lifts remained open and saw large crowds during the weekend. A post on the White Cat Mountain Facebook page said, We will rebuild. A power outage complicated operations at Dane County Air Regional Airport on Monday. Power went out at around 5.30 in the morning and a backup generator also failed. Passengers cannot board or get off of the planes in power outages at airports. Power was restored to the airport by 8 o'clock a.m. and the cause of the outage was, um, was not immediately known. Passengers are asked to check with their airlines on the status of their flights. The pilot of a single passenger plane that made an emergency landing Friday afternoon in the Sheboygan County town of Scott has been identified as 64-year-old Michael Krauswick of Algoma, Wisconsin. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Office in a press release said Krauswick suffered non-incapacitating -incap injuries and no one else on board the plane. The situation is still under investigation by the FAA and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. And finally, Sunday was a day of prayer and thanksgiving in Barron County after the safe return of 13-year-old kidnapping victim Jamie Kloss. Several hundred people attended a special service at St. Peter's Catholic Church in Cameron, the same church that hosted the funerals for Jamie's parents after the killings that started that 88-day ordeal. Jamie told investigators that she heard the shot that killed her father and witnessed her mother's murder while they were hiding in the bathroom. She was dragged away from the scene and put into the truck of suspect Jake Patterson's car, and she was held at his home in Gordon until she was able to free herself. Priest John Garretts told the crowd, you have just experienced one of the great miracles of our time. He said God and those who prayed had a role in Jamie's safe return, and many of the parishioners thanked law enforcement who were in attendance at the service. Jamie has been staying with her aunt, who is now her legal guardian, and her pet dogs since her escape. Her abductor is due back in court on February 6th, and it is possible additional charges will be filed at that time. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next week for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.